Hello there, Chris here from Becker's Models and have I got something special for you here today. Originally I was going to make this video part of my uh, 1 million view special that I did, my Talking Models piece, but I've spun this out as a separate video because I got a little bit ahead of myself, got a bit excited, starting to cut off some parts and the sprues, but this is an unboxing video of Border Models, 132nd scale, over at Lancaster. And my initial reaction, and if you don't want to watch the entire video and just want to cut it off here, my initial reaction to uh, this kit is, well, I'm trying to find that word in English. Probably the Germans have got a good word for this. What's that word that's got equal parts? Exhilaration, excitement, anticipation, and disappointment. This kit is a disappointment for me. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. I've been at the top of my wish list for so long, uh, but I have a different bent. I've been touched, mm -hmm, as you can probably tell behind here, all my models. I love to do my aircraft in flight. This kit's not designed for that at all. At first glance, it looks like it, but not in reality. Anyway, this is the point of this video. I'm gonna go over this kit from my point of view. For the 99.9% .9 of you who have contemplated buying this kit or have this kit, you're gonna be building it wheels down, not me. <laughs> so maybe there's only a few of you who wanna watch this. That's fine, that's great. But you know, I'm gonna put this up there anyway, and I'll show you some of the parts that get me really excited about the kit and some of the things I'm I'm a bit disappointed, but challenged, because I will do this. I will get this up in the air. So, let's get to it. Let's get into this big bertha of a, of a kit. I've made myself a nice hot cup of coffee, so I'll um, have that to the side as we get through this and have a quick chat about this big bloody box. Border models, 32 scale Lancaster. Now, my dog, literally, just as I turn the camera on, as I set everything up, has started to go nuts. That's Penny. You'll hear her outside. She was chasing something out in the forest out the back. Don't know what the hell it is. She does it just occasionally. Just She just trips a switch and goes cray-cray. All right, so let's open this bad boy up. The trusty Fiskers. Let's have a look inside the box. Oh, look at that. Oh, my goodness. Ah. If those of you haven't seen my uh, wish list video where I said, you know, What's on my wish list of kits I want to I want to see? One of them was the Wingnut Wings, or well, the last one was the Wingnut Wings, Lancaster, and here it is, more or less. <laughs> We've got beautiful box art here by Mark Postlethwaite. I actually follow him on um, I think YouTube or Instagram. I can't remember where I, where I follow or on Facebook. Fantastic artist. Even though I don't like the wheels down, I'll give this a bit of a break. Now I'm going to put my coffee cup aside because to get this out, it's so tight. I might need a bit more bench room, so hang on a second. So here it is. It's a massive beastie. And in fact, it's so big, the, the box doesn't close over the, the bottom here. And I have heard from people, I haven't watched, I've tried to watch as little as possible, try to look into this as little as possible, try to keep the excitement up. It's like when you, uh, you know, a movie's coming out soon, you're like, oh, you don't want to watch the trailer or what have you. And uh, so I, I don't know what to expect fully here. I know to expect a few things, but particularly the clear parts might not be the best, but there's a solution to that. But this is not the biggest box in my stash, but it will have a, um, uh, what's, what's the bigger one that I've got than this? Oh, the Pegasus Models MLEV 5 science fiction thing. And it's, it's another six inches longer each way. I think it's a massive box with a lot of, a lot of room. I'm just trying to think what else have I got? Some, oh, and of course the mighty Yamato. <laughs> I've got a few big kits that I really need to get into eventually one day. Um, anyway, enough waffling. Let's have a quick look around the, around the box and on this angle. You can definitely see the stress skin effect that the wing nut wing guys did it originally. Uh, a bit of a blurb, some, what are those things called? I can't, you can't even see it, so why am I pointing to it? So we've got full interior detail, Yahoo. Is anybody ever gonna build it all that way and do it as a uh, as a skeleton as they do it in the, the corners there? Have you got an idea how what I'm thinking about doing with mine? Let's just keep going around. It's a massive box. Okay, let's look at the markings on the back. Let's have a quick look. Victorious Virgin. Ooh, that looks interesting. Uh, late War, we got the Phantom of the Ruhr, and we got a the AJ G one here as well. So Mark II, Mark III, Mark One. So yes, you can do a Mark One or Three. Uh, have we got that one? Yeah, Mark One or Mark Three. Alright, upside down, Miss Jane, let's get this thing open. Now, as much as I don't like wheels down, that is lovely box art, and I will show you in a little bit long, well, a little bit later. I'm going to put this up on my um, 
on my shelf alongside the U9. I think it's going to look real nice. So let's have a deep dive in. First things first, I think that's the clear parts at the top. It's really weird, the squeeze on the top. Uh, we'll look at them very closely in a minute. Oh, I can hear rattling, that's not a good sign. This thing's jammed back with, screw with spruce. You almost said screws. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, let's, have, let's just have a quick boop. I'm just going to have a quick look. Like I said, I have not opened this. It's been sitting under my desk for a couple of months. And wow. Holy hell, white man. Jeez, the detail on that's amazing. Whoa, look at that instrument panel. Fire out. Can you see that? I've got my big bench light on. I think it might be up. Um, I've rearranged it because I, I need more light because I'm going, I'm going, I was about to say I'm going more deaf. I am going more deaf. I'm going more blind. I need more light. More light as these. That instrument panel is just amazing. Can you see that? Fire out. And all the detail. Oh, hang on. Have I stuffed up? I've got to put this back in the right way. <laughs> um, yeah. Look, I'm not going to pull everything out because we'll just be here for ages and there's, there's, you know, these sort of videos out there everywhere. I'd rather talk about other stuff. And I'm just going to have a quick little, oh, look at that. Merlin engines. Oh my God. Wheel well doors. Hang on. They better not be molded open. I want to go have a look at the instruction. It's right at the bottom, of course. So let's see if I can get it out without screwing everything up. Oh, that, the wings look amazing. Okay. I'm getting a little bit excited. Oh, it's a very small instruction. Okay, let's see if I can get that in properly again. All right, let me rearrange this. The first thing I went to when I opened up the instructions, and you know, I had a quick look, but I was furiously looking for, have they engineered any of these parts to do in flight? Now you're thinking, how the hell are you gonna display a 1 32nd scale Lancaster in flight? Well, I have my ideas. I'll, um, I might show you a bit later, but I've got a Tamiya 148 scale Lancaster underway, and I've already modified that one for in-flight uh, display with a, uh, with a sort of, it's got a nod to what I intend to do with this one. Um, what I really intend to do with this, because of the size and trying to dis display it, I've got a new display cabinet here, but I'll probably have to get another one for the Lank is a vertical display, um, which means basically the aircraft's mounted up against the wall. So anyway, beyond that, it does need a few, obviously, you know, it's my, it's my want. It needs some modifications to go in flight, but it looks like they've done with the wheels, not necessarily the wheel well covers it. They haven't shown any, here's the starboard wing uh, and the port inner wing. They haven't shown any sort of indication that these doors, the D parts will actually close in over the nacelles. Uh, for, the, for the engines. One would hope that they fit and in fact if I have some spare time I might actually cut these off the sprues and uh, do a bit of a dry fit see how bad it is because that's the only issue with this kit that will um, you know well yeah only issue maybe there's a few more issues but let's just see but the other good thing they've done is even though uh, for the other thing I was looking for was the the rear wheel They've got the option there. Let's zoom in so all the people at home can see, Chris. Zoom in. Can you see that? Okay, zooming in. They've got two different types of, of rear wheels, uh, the early and the anti-shimmy. In fact, as you go through this whole kit, they've, they've really done their homework, uh, I assume wingnut wings have, and given you all different types of options, alternative IFF aerials, lamps, bloody everything. It's just really, really good to see. But also what they've done is they've included weighted wheels and in flight wheels which is great and they've also done that with the main wheels see that so there's no weight to those wheels and these wheels are weighted fantastic so the only fly in the ointment is hopefully these doors will fit get in camera Chris that these doors will fit closed up um, and yeah I'm, I might even pull those sprues out so what are we looking at I'll, I'll have a look at them later okay so you can see what I'm more interested in than anything else. The other thing I'm going to be doing with this kit because it's in flight and luckily I think it's Legend or ZLPLA, I can't remember which. It's either the Korean or the Chinese company that have done it. There's no crew in this, unfortunately, uh, even though there's crew everywhere and all the artwork and so forth. Uh, there is a full set of crew seated flying positions um, in the ready positions uh, coming soon. And I'm definitely going to get that for this. Um, in fact, they're doing it for 148, 172. They're doing it for B-17s as well, which is great. So finally, we're going to get some high-quality uh, crew 
to put inside our aircraft. So let's just have a quick look at the instruction book. It's it's fairly hefty. It's um it's quite good, but it's you know it's not um there's a in the inner back page you got a completed model there, Phantom of the Rear, uh, and I've had a, just a quick look through it, and that's all I'm going to do today. If we want to have a more extensive look, uh, hit me up, and we might have a, a bit of a, a longer look, but. Um, yeah, basic, you know, you've got a sprue map at the front, just like everything. You've got uh, this sort of CAD exploder design uh, system. Airfix and other companies are using this where you colour in the bits that you've just done and for the next step. It does look quite dense. It does look like there's quite a lot of uh, <laughs> things going on because, you know, it's a full interior. It's Everything's there. Let's just zoom out a little bit more. Uh, everything's in there you've got you know and I believe they've just announced uh, the nose kit so the whole nose is going to come out just like um, HKM did with theirs so you can what they've done is they've got these these sprues here so that whole nose kit's going to be available as a separate kit which is great it's fantastic and again if you have crew with it you could do it as a sort of a sectional in-flight display it would be really dynamic it would look great bombardier in the nose you know what a great display uh, the turrets are fully involved you've got uh, a full full Bombay, um, you know, options for different glasswork everywhere, full set of bombs, um, you know, the big ones, the British American style, the oh, it's just everything. It's just yeah, it's just amazing. They've really gone to town with this kit, and you can see why it's one of the most expensive kits, or well, the most expensive kit I think you can get. Here we go. Lots of Merlin engines. You can have a Rolls Royce or Packard version. Uh, which what much of a difference is there? The rocker covers maybe. Something, I don't know. Um, and different carburetors, there you go. So, yeah, these look amazing. These look Tamiya quality sort of detail. Uh, for me, however, funnily enough, I probably won't use them. I might make one or two for mine. Uh, just as a separate display, but I'm actually gonna use the dummy motors, which they don't show here, that they're a bit further forward. Now, for the surfaces, all the surfaces are separate. So the tail rudders, even the trim tabs are separate. Oh, that's really good. So you can modify them, have them poised a little bit differently. Elevators are separate, which is great. Show them, Chris, don't just point at nothing. More turrets, more harnesses. There's photo etch harnesses all the way through and everything like that, as Mr. Flory likes to wrap it on. Rear turrets, rear turret late, so there's different types. And the wings, we've got, yep, poseable ailerons and flaps. Yahoo, see this should be in every aircraft kit. You should be able to pose all the flight services. Okay, here are the dummy engines for the dummy like me who wants to go in flight. So there's a big space there to chuck in a little micro motor. So hopefully I can motorize this and that would look pretty bloody fantastic. Uh, so I've seen this done. I can see a lot of people doing just this display, not putting the outer wings on. Uh, be interesting to see what the engineering is like to attach the outer wings. We've got different propellers, we've got nad uh, naddles, naddles or paddles, paddles and needles, all different types of the aerials and fuzzy bits that stick out the front, cameras and so forth. And then we've got a rigging diagram, which is actually, that's really well done. It's a lovely, lovely picture. And then of course they're shacking up with ammo for the paint color call outs. It's a little bit small. I mean, that's a bit disappointing, but you know, they're trying to do the sort of, I mean, this would be nicer if it was a big page, so, sort of like what, um, who did I just review? Yeah, Great Wall Hobby with their Curtis, that was amazing what they did with theirs. Anyway, that looks amazing. I might, oh, let's have a look at the, oh, that's right, we've got to look at the, the clear parts because I think that might be uh, a bit poo poo. Ooh, there's brass barrels in here. Let me just open this up. Are we still recording? Yep, okay. Sometimes my camera gives up the ghost after about 10 or 12 minutes, so look at that. We've got brass barrels for the, uh, they're really, they're lovely, that's fantastic. What else have we got in here? We've got stencils, we've got a full set of photo etch harnesses, which are pretty thin, and then we've got all, I'm not gonna take the decals out, they look pretty damn good, particularly all the stencils for the inside of the cockpit. Uh, yeah, the fonts look a little bit too modern though for some of those some of these ones here. I'll have to have a look at that later. Anyway, let's just put them aside. I just want to quickly open up these clear parts and see if I've got a problem. My good mate Bill, who's got one of these as well, we bought one at the same time. He, uh, I think he had a problem with his. So let's just quickly open this up. One or two's come off already. That's fine, I guess. There's a lot of parts. Okay, here we go. Dun, dun, dun. 
Maybe I'll zoom in so you can all see. And also, the way I've reorganized my bench, I've got this bloody big, great big line down the middle. <laughs> all right, let's have a look, tighten up. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. It's not too bad. Oh, we've got a bit of a crack in the main canopy there. Is that a crack or a hair, a dog hair? Oh, there is, yep, there's a crack there. Oh no, yep. Yep, it's cracked. Look at that. Bugger it. Main canopy's cracked. That's just the way they've they've done it. Oh, that's a shame. That's a real shame. It's cracked there and there and there. Okay. The clear parts are okay, but they are. Can you see the distortion I'm getting? Getting a little bit of distortion on those lines. All right. See the distortion there? That's not too good. All right, I think I'm going to be writing to Mr. Border like a lot of other people. This is this isn't hasn't surprised me because I have heard this happen to a lot of people. Let's open up the other one, see if they're okay. Um, oop, that doesn't sound good. I can hear things already. No, okay. So let's what we got here. Um, yeah, there's a bit of scratching and rubbing there. I mean, it's all well and good to put them inside the, the paper there, but if you've got this right on top of the box, you know, it's not really going to survive. Look at that, that's cracked. Big crack through through that one, just there. See that? That's a shame. Side windows have got a scratch in them. There, both of them have. That's not good. Uh, yeah. All right. That's a disappointing thing, isn't it? But at least there's some spares, I guess. Um, some of the other windows look pretty good, but yeah. Anyway, it is what it is. I sort of knew this was gonna happen. I'm not that disappointed. I know it can be fixed. I'm not exactly gonna be starting this in the next five minutes. I'm really keen to see if <laughs> the uh, wheel well doors can actually fit on, um, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit overwhelmed. This, these screws are massive. Look at this. I've had to zoom all the way out. Here are the wheels. You've got the normal wheels here, unweighted, and you've got the weighted wheels. Here, this is the uh, the D sprue. Yes, that's the D. And according to the instructions, I need the J sprue, which is the inner wings. And they're massive. Look at that. As big as my hand. So let's cut these open because what I want to do is I want to trial fit the wheel well covers there. Can you hear the disappointment? disappointment in my voice I've just realized looking at the instructions that um, the wheel doors aren't one piece well, I should say they've attached the wheel doors to the outside uh, nacelle bay so these parts here see this so that goes to the underside of the the nacelle and that's the open door I'll just flip this over to have a look on the inside so yeah, you can see the hinge there. There's a hinge all the way along there. So it's already done. Wheels down. Well, isn't that a shit? Um, now, how can I modify that? <laughs> That's the first question. And also this hump here at the back where the flap actuator is going. Because again, I'm reading the instructions and it may be because of omission uh, it looks like you can only display the flaps open because of the way they've engineered this this hump here at the back which attaches to the flap actuator in here so that as you can see here it's open <sighs> why do they have to make it so hard no, no I'm still doing this so the um, the way to do that, of course, is I have to cut off this door without obliterating that piano hinge detail, or design my own doors, or perhaps score along it, along each side and bend it. That might be the option to do as well. But damned if I'm going to do this kit wheels down. Every, every single man and his dog is going to do it wheels down. I'm not doing that. So I will find a solution. So there you go, that segue, which I was hoping to get all sort of happy about, has turned into a bummer. But, uh, 
you know, that's what modeling's all about. You come across these challenges and they have to be taken on board and fixed. So I will fix this problem. I just wish, I just really wish that, um, you know, model kits of aircraft were designed to display them like aircraft.